Hey folks, this is Matt once again, and welcome back to another review, this time of Force of Execution, which I guess this will be more of a mild rant, because I can't say I like the film, but it's, I don't hate it, but would I ever watch the film again? No, I would never watch the film again. So it's kind of like Born to Race Hell. Uh, where they're both films that there's much worse that Seagal's been in, much, much worse. But there's also much, much better. And, you know, there are films I thought were alright, but I can watch The Keeper, Into the Sun. I don't talk about his direct -to video stuff. There's some I thought were decent, Pistol Whipped, Urban Justice, and then there's a lot, and a lot that are fucking awful. Foreigner, Alpha Kill, Belly of the Beast, fucking... Attack Force, Submerged, and more. This, Steven Seagal isn't even really the star of the film. I mean, he's kind of, but he's in it at the beginning, quite a bit at the end, in the middle kind of sporadically, but it also belongs kind of more to this other guy who is also in this film called Bren Foster. And you also have Bean Rames, Danny Trails in it. And it's one of those movies where I don't hate the movie to death because I thought that the opening was alright. Seagal's character is a crime lord. And John Alexander, which by the way, Force of Execution got two more movies with the same character. One is this one, A Good Man, which I think I, I read up it's a prequel, and then another one called Absolution. So for some reason this character was so popular it got two more movies from Steven Seagal. I don't, I don't understand that. But I mean the opening, he, okay, he's got the goatee, so he's got a little bit of a different look. Granted, he would use this look for like five more, seven more fucking movies, but okay, a little bit different look to go T. And this guy's tied down, again, he's a crime lord, but at the same time, like he's a crime lord, but he's not that bad of a guy, I guess, but he is, but he's not. I mean, hell, you have another movie called A Good Man, so he's like, he's bad, but he's not that bad, but he's like, oh, I, I don't hurt anyone who doesn't deserve it, but at the same time, he's a crime lord, so I. I didn't really understand that. A bunch of bullshit. But this guy, you, you're a rat. You're a motherfucking rat. And here's a knife. So you could commit seppuku. Or, you know, I'll do it for you. Guy comes at him. And Sadal beats the fuck out of him. And it was an alright beating. I mean, most of Sadal's fights are not really fights. They're more just beatings. Because he's so one-sided. But he gives a guy like a chop to the head and a beating and kind of takes his hand like right here and sort of squeezes and you hear that his neck's breaking. It's an alright little beating. And then we're introduced to Seagull's sort of friend, protege, guy he, he thinks of his family who is sent out to kill Marks, either people who ratted on people or so forth. So they're not really that good of a guys, I guess. I mean, but I guess only rats, as in people who told on other people, not little rats. That'd be a more fun movie. More weird movie, but more fun movie. But maybe they're just people who tell on people who are also bad people, and the people who are the rats are also good people. Oh, fucking who? I'll come I'll, if I keep going on that route, I'll be more confusing than some of Seagal's fucking movies, like The Foreigner. But he wants this guy played by, what's the guy's name? Bren Foster? Who I swear sometimes looks like Colin Farrell. I don't know why. Sometimes I see this guy, and I didn't notice it when I saw this movie, him in this movie, but when I'm watching this, it's like, Sometimes he reminds me, if I squint a little bit, like a kind of like a Colin Farrell. Like if it was Colin Farrell's brother, who knew more shorts. 
I'm probably the only one that thinks that, but anyway, this guy who, again, to me, looks like Colin Farrell's brother, he sent out to take out this mark and send a message. And the guy is supposed to break into this prison. He has a guard uniform. And he's a really good martial artist. I'll say that. He's, I looked at him, he's been trained in a lot of different arts. I never, I mean, I liked the little bit he had in this, and he did good martial arts. He's kicking these guards' ass, and um, granted, it's nothing like Scott Atkins in his films or Michael J. White or such. But I thought for a guy I'd never really known much, the little bits that he's given, being some thugs and some prisoners and maybe some guards up, he, he's pretty adept at martial arts. And he's supposed to kill this guy. Gives it the Veen Reigns. Veen Reigns says, "No, no, no, that's the wrong guy." It's that guy. And that's sort of their contact in prison. So the guy turns around and kills the guy he's told. And he's leaving and he kicks these people's ass down this hallway. Again, some good martial art work. But then when he gets back, he's told by Seagal and this other guy, you got the wrong mark. So later on you find out this guy, got, <laughs> who's really the lead of the film, he got set up. He got set up by Veen Rames, and Veen Rames is really the bad guy and trying to take over Steven Seagal's business. But we're not there yet. Because, you know, other people want him killed, but Steven Seagal likes him, thinks of him as family. It's like, no, 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 he's not going to die. Just let him. He's going to live. So our lead takes his punishment. He's being badly with a hammer to the point that his hands are royally fucked up. In fact, months later, his hands were still busted and fucked up. Seagal comes by, gives him some money, which the guy never uses the money he's given because throughout the film, he's still living like he's homeless. Someone, Danny Trejo, leaves food for him. He's got the same clothes. I'm like, Seagal gave you money. It looks like a shitload of money. Why don't you buy some clothes and get some food? I don't understand that, but whatever. It's like, what was the fucking point? So, I mean, that almost... Anyway, so so Seagal gives him money that the guy's not going to use. Until later on in the film, when Seagal says, Remember that money I gave you? Use it now. So I guess he wasn't going to use it until Seagal told him to. Veen Reigns, he's... I like Veen Reigns. I, li I really like him in the Dawn of the Dead remake. And Pulp Fiction. I, Veen Reigns, I like as an actor. It's cool that he's in the film. He's not really... It's not really that great of a part, but it, I mean, it's cool to see Vane Rames. But on the flip side, it's not really much of a part, but Vane Rames, sort of the guy that is, is our bad, I guess, bad guy to these other bad guys. I mean, really, everyone's a bad guy, but I guess that's why they're kind of wishy washy with Isidol and this guy. Are they bad guys? Or are they kind of bad guys? Well, he's a crime lord, but he's not that bad of a guy. You're like, what? So anyway, Vin Rames meets Steven Seagal. Vin Rames is called Ice, the Ice Man. I'm like from Top Gun. It's a different Ice Man. So he's Ice, Ice T or Ice Cube, and he talks about how well we have that rat that you guy didn't get, and he's in this pinata. And he comes by and he tells his guy to stop beating that guy, and this guy says no. And Vin Rames kind of gets in the fight, but it looks goofy. And maybe this is why Vin Rames, I mean, other than Undisputed, you don't really see a lot of Vin Rames getting in fist fights because either he's he's a bit too slow to do that or the directing fucked it up because his fights seem look really awkward. It might have been the editing, but it was awkwardly edited. And I don't know how to... The, put into words. Maybe other people don't mind it, but I thought it looked awkward. So, it's almost as if this film is kind of two stories, like two movies. You have the Veen Reigns trying to muscle in on Seagull's turf, and Veen Reigns thuds either shooting these people over here at this chop shop type facility, or over here talking with these other guys to go into business with him. And on the flip side, you have the lead, who is homeless, and it's supposed to be a road to redemption story where he's 
broken down and there's one heavy-handed scene that he tries to he wants to kill himself it just didn't work you know how you make that work well lethal weapon one that's how you do a scene like that well here it just looked heavy-handed and like the lead guy I can't say he's a great actor but he wasn't awful he's not given tons of dialogue and I don't know what else he's done I think he did a lot of soap proper work but it's just I kind of want him to use more martial arts because he seems very adept like very well trained in martial arts and I thought that those were the best fight scenes in the movie and it's kind of like he his fight scenes overshadow anything Seagull does so I think that's the weird thing is Force of Execution if you look at this Seagull movie you, you'd be disappointed because there's not tons of action with Seagull in it. The beginning, him shooting a bit at the end, and two little things in the middle. And even story-wise, it seems more like this guy's movie. And again, I don't understand why like, he got that money from Seagull, but he's still living like he's homeless and trying to find food. Uh, he meets, he helps Danny Trejo, who's this sort of cook at this diner where this white woman's at and Danny Trail cares for the white woman as if it was a daughter and vice versa and probably they're under the protection of Steven Seagal at one point these guys try to beat up Danny Trail and the guy our lead guy comes in beats their ass then another time the woman's attacked in the diner and both that guy and Seagal arrives him and the lead guy fight in the diner, and honestly, the lead, the lead guy, Bren Foster, his fighting ability overshadows Seagal. Seagal is just this handy, handheld, you know, sort of whatever little bits of martial arts that just, I don't know, just didn't look that great. But then here's this other guy who's doing these kicks and these nice kicks, as it. You know, like Scott Atkins would do. And I, part of me wonders if the reason why, like, the fight scenes with the guy in it are. I like his ability, but maybe because Steven Seagal was in it, and I would bet money that he had a hand in producing it, that maybe he didn't want the guy to be overshadowing him too much. So maybe. It's almost as if this Brent Foster, he should have just had the movie to himself and you should not have Steven Seagal in it in the first place. Because it's kind of weird as if this movie doesn't know, same with A Good Man, when I watch that, this movie doesn't know who it wants to be in the lead. Does it want Seagal to be in the lead? It's not like this where they're co-leads and it's that's the gimmick, like Tango and Cash, you know, those two guys. It's, this, this in the good man really does feel like who's the lead? No, this guy, no, this guy. No, this is this goal, no, this is stuff. And maybe other people aren't bothered by it, but it's kind of weird to me. But pretty much, Seagal goes to see Veen Rames. These guys try to stop him. He punches too and makes their head go through a wall, it makes a little hole. We got a little smirk out of me. Our lead gets knocked out by Treo and Danny Treo and tied down. It's because he's going to put these scorpions on him and re-break his hands. And somehow the scorpion's poison is going to heal his hands. And it's going to... It's going to... Make his hands better. And it does. Don't ask me to explain because I didn't fucking get it either. And it seems like even the movie didn't fucking get it because even Danny Trey was like, yeah, something like that. I'm like, is this supposed to be funny or is this just... I don't care. So, yeah, he puts the scorpions where the poison kicks in and then he rebreaks the hand. It's about re-breaking it, and then the poison will help form the bone. I mean, what is it? so what? It's, if I get scorpion poisoning me, I could be like Wolverine and heal my bones? 
See, I, I started doing this a lot as I'm reviewing more of Dolphins. This started twitching. I swear, because watching so many of these fucking directed videos of Steven's Dolphins is making my brain twitch. Uh, even my cat is streaming in pain and it's like, please don't talk about Sadol more. I know, I know. If you heard that, if you didn't hear that, uh, my cat was streaming. No, <laughs> yeah, I know, but I gotta finish this up. I started it. I want to finish it. Be like, why are you still continuing it? Because not many people will finish this at all. Thought, like I said, it's about willpower. It's about stamina is about how far can you go and how sane can you be and there's only one other person who has reviewed every single Stings at all film and that's a good friend of mine the Italian Stallion Fabio and I'm like if he can do it I can do it and we'll be the two only guys on YouTube that reviewed every single old film and it's fun being unique But yeah, the bad guys take the girl, they take Danny Trejo, Trejo gets stabbed and killed. The lead guy, they think he's dead from the poison, he's ready to be buried. He fights these two guys, kicks one where the chainsaw lands on the guy's leg. Sadly, with some CG enhancements. The better way to do that was how they did with Hostel. Well, however you want to talk about Hostel, at least it had some good gore effects by KMB. That late thing should have been like Hostel. Um, it should have been just practical effects, no CGI enhancement. So that hurt it a bit. But he kissed these two guys' ass. Again, I like the martial arts in the guy. And he's not, I don't think he's a horrible actor. He's there. But I've seen much worse. And it just made me laugh because I kept looking. I'm like, is he, is he related to Colin Farrell? I don't know. That's just from my own entertainment. Gets information where this girl's at. At the same time, Vina Reigns is going to go on a siege on Sadol's place. And Sadol has some of his men there. And they're geared up with machine guns. And when Vina Reigns game goes into it, Sadol and his men come out and they shoot some people. Um, shoot some more people. And the ending was alright. Like I said, the beginning and the ending of the film were alright. The middle was too dull and too slow. Except once in a while when the lead fights and you don't get a little something, but the I didn't give a shit what Veen Reigns was trying to do and Sadol and and the middle portion seemed like he was barely in it and they don't give much charisma or much personality to the lead guy. I think that's another problem. Lead guy just doesn't have much personality or charisma or you know, that kind of it factor. And not enough ass kicking as well from that guy. I mean, he's really good martial artist to have, have some really extended, yeah, moments. Like when you're watching the transporter and you have the oil slick scene and Jason Statham just kicking everyone's ass. Or you see scenes in Ninja 2, Shadow of Tears, Star Actors having these big, long scenes. Here, like, the scenes are, um, I wouldn't say very short, but fairly short. But when the, the little bits happen, I'm like, okay, cool. This guy is a good martial artist. <clears throat> and even, you know, I had a little bit of okayness to Seagal in the third act where Seagal fights these two guys, does sort of his clothesline takedown, throws a knife at another guy, stabs him. Uh, while meeting this lead guy is beating this other guy, sort of using some elbows um, as of some little bit of Muay Thai, little bit. Almost as if he's trying to do Tony Ja, those elbow hits on the guy's head like a handful of times. Then uh, Vin Rames has the girl, and so oh, he does this thing where he throws the flashlight, and Vin Rames looks at the flashlight as he's going to lead die. And Sadol turns with the gun. Vin Rames is ready to turn, and Sadol shoots Vin Rames. And I think is dead, but I don't think he is dead because. After they say some stuff, and the lead guy asks, are you really going to retire? And Sadol says, yeah. 
The lead guy looks back and you see a blood puddle and footprints. And I'm like, is Vinny Reams alive? Is his character alive? Did he get shot by Sadol and lived? Because if so, is no one going to mention this? That his character is still out there and will probably want revenge? And yet Sadol says, oh, it's funny. One line dialogue he says is, see, I'm a dinosaur. I'm like, you have no idea how right you are. People think I'm being too rude. I'm sorry, you watch all these directed video Steven Seagal films and you tell me. When you watch every single one of them and the small time frame I'm doing it. And yeah, a month or so is a small time frame to watch all those directed video Seagal movies. You watch them all in a marathon, you tell me. So the reason this isn't a full-blown rant is because I thought the lead guy, despite the fact he doesn't really have much of a charisma or an it factor, when he broke out the martial arts, I thought he was talented. The beginning with Seagal, and this guy was tied up and beats the fuck out of him. I thought it was an okay bit. The bit at the end when the action that happened, Seagal fighting these two guys, and lead fighting this one big guy. I thought it was so-so. Like, already so-so. Like, so -so. Not great. Even though Veen Rames, not much of a character, it's cool to see Veen Rames in there. That's what I mean. I, if someone told me which would you rather watch, this or... Uh, Against the Dark, I'd be like, definitely this over Against the Dark. Or Attack Force, or Today You Die, or Black Dawn. Yeah, definitely this. Even though Seagal's not in the lead, when he does, he's... Some okay little action scenes, all right. And the lead guy has some nice little martial arts moves he pulled off. Um, it's just the middle section was fairly dull. But okay, you know, this one lead guy has a little bit of road re redemption. But at the same time, you're t I'm trying to think, are these really good guys? Are they kind of good guys? Are not really good guys? Because they're part of a crime lord syndicate, but yet they're... Seems like all they're doing... All I can say is that, concerning I saw Today You Die and Black Dawn and Shadow Man and I even watched this one called Gutshot Straight. Yeah, Gutshot Straight. I'll get to that next time. No, not next time. Uh, no, I still have a movie. Well, this is going to be next. And I'd rather watch this over this. Because this was extremely dull from beginning to end. Here... There's little moments that were okay, mediocre time waster, but when I say mild rant, it's sort of a, it's not even faint praise, it's not praise because it's still a rant, it's just, it's shit, it's just not as shit as a lot of the other directed video stuff I've been watching from Seagull. It's shit, it's just not as shit. It's not as shitty. It's still shit, but it's not as shit. So I'm going to end it because it's already 23 minutes, way too long. But anyway, thanks for watching, take care, and next time, I'm going to watch a good man. Bullshit, more like a fat man. God damn it.